my my name is Arthur Cowling. I'm born in Somerset and uh, lived in Somerset all my life. And uh, I was born on the Brendan Hills, the other side of Wivelliscombe. And in 1960, oh God, what was that? 60. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Yeah, sixty-seven. No, one. It was fifty-seven, fifty-eight. They built a, a reservoir at Clatworthy, and my father rented a farm in the valley there, and the farm was took off for the Clatworthy reservoir. So then we kids were brought up there, and then we moved to the next farm, at his father's farm, and that's where we were brought up at a place called near Radish Cross on the Brendan Hills. And uh, then from there we worked and eventually I took on a little farm down at Stagursey, 40 acres where I started farming on my own account. And then four years into that I got farmer's lung and I had to give it all up. I had to, because uh, an illness, you know, farmer's lung with the dust, the mould in the hay and the corn and it caused a shadow on my lung. And of course, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't walk very well. And uh, so they set, advised me to give up the farm and go and work for somebody. Well, I gave up the farm and then I still worked on the farm, but I wore a respirator. And the th reason was because they said if I worked on my own again, I would be working too hard and I'd have to, you know, wouldn't have time off. But working for somebody else, I would get time off and uh, then to help me to rest and get better, which I'd done. And it took eight years before the shadow was gone off my lungs. But in 10 years, when they x-rayed me again, I was fine and all clear. Well, then we moved up to Post, no, to Coatsley. And I worked on a farm there for 16 months. And then from there, I went to Poshamere to a to a farm manor farm potion and worked there for 21 years and then 20 21 years ago i gave up and started my own business again started uh, milk relief milking uh sheep shearing and doing all sorts like that you know so that's how i sort of came to live here and then we bought this land and put this bungalow here and uh, that's how we started and so through the years, I've done fencing, sheep shearing, relief milking. I used to relief milk on about five farms at one time, you know, like different times. And then I used to do, that was for people probably on holiday or things like, or they wanted time off. And then uh, went, to, uh, what did I do then? I, like I said, I was doing the sheep shearing, I shear all round. Somerset Air, Wiltshire, and North Somerset into Badmington. Done a little bit on the borders of Devon, and uh, and I done about two and a half, sometimes three months a year sheep shearing, which was good. And I was the one that sheared all the little flocks, like the fives and tens and twenties. I think the biggest flock I had to start with about six hundred, where I got some contract shearers in to help me. And then I didn't do that again. I, I just went on doing me little ones shear by myself. And I had all my own kit. Used to have me pick up and uh, me dog. And uh, it's just a job, you know. And I'd get around and meet a lot of people. Made a lot of friends in Somerset. And uh, I expect whoever sees this, they'll say, there's that old bloke used to come around shearing all sheep. <laughs> but uh, no, I've really enjoyed, you know, what I've done. And uh, we... we well, I suppose we've done quite well here. Then we've done the logs for the winter. In the winter months, we've done the logs as well. So in the morning, I used to get up at quarter to four in the morning and I used to do the milking and then come home at breakfast. And then I used to go off sheep shearing. This was in the summer. And then when I went it on my own this time, I took my HGV and I started doing leaf driving for a local haulier cattle all here and I used to go all over the place Essex um, Braintree North Wales you know taking cattle and sheep to different various places and 
and then if anybody wanted any fencing done, I'd done all this and I always started at four quarter, always got up at four quarter to four in the morning. And if you ask Christine, she said, I never ever moaned about going to work. Always used to enjoy going to work, you know. So yeah, it was nice. And uh, So you said you, you grew up on farms. Yeah. Is there any other like profession that you ever like thought about doing or was it always no always farm always farm always because my father was a farmer and he he had about 250 acres to start with and he rented that off of a chappy up crocombe uh down on the quantox and they had loads of farms several farms in that area and then he, when they took the reservoir um, the farm for the reservoir is is he went and lived on his dad's farm and then he took over he took it over eventually and that's where we were brought up yeah so it was quite good yeah we had good times and we all we all had ponies when we were young ride the valleys of the pony then we had motorbikes and then it was cars you know and all this sort of thing you know but yeah it was nice it was good 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 life always had and i've enjoyed everything i've done i i really have and nothing was a chore my work was all you know, good. I enjoyed my work. I used to love it, like the milking and the shearing and all of it. I used to enjoy it. Love, love what I done. And there's so many people that you know get up and them. Oh, I've got to go to work. And it's wrong way to look at it. If you look at it as a um, like, as a pleasure to do it, it's nice. Yeah, and I really have enjoyed it. So how did how do you feel about um, like country and living? On a farm and being nice as, as a child how did you feel about we we well i suppose in a way we took it for granted because we didn't know anything different you know we we were brought up on the farm bread and cream <laughs> cheese milk our own milk raw milk and everything i mean there wasn't none of this well you can't have this because you to get so and so or you know if you eat too much of this that is no good to you and we were just just at it and that was it. Yeah, it's lovely. And also, I suppose you've been in the industry, like with farming and with the sheep shearing, for quite a long time. Did you see it change throughout that time? Did it change for the better? Or what? Um, well, I haven't really known it. I started shearing when I was 12 years old. My father, when I came home from school, um, I'd go up and father would be shearing up in the field. And, uh, you know, I'd try and do it. And I caught all the lamb one day. And he said, go on, have a go. He said, so I, I put the clippers to the lamb. And of course, when I finished, I hardly took off any wool. I thought I'd done all right. And he said, that had no good. So he cuddled the sheep again. And he stood behind me and he cuddled my hand. And he guided my hand with the clipper into the wool. And gradually done it. And he done it about four or five times and got me to put the, the blade near the skin. And it was only just to show me. And once I got the hang of it, I started shearing, and but I mean to start with, I only sheared probably, I don't know, 10, 12, and then gradually you build up. And the most I ever sheared in a day was 120, you know, which is nothing nowadays because some of these young lads are shearing two, 300 a day. and But they, they shear the New Zealand way, whereas I sheared the old English way round and round, and they shear the long way, you know. So it's quite interesting. Why, why would they, why have they adopted the like? Well, because it was quicker. Oh. I mean, there was a man called Jeffrey Bowen came over here in the 50s and he was shearing this way. And I mean, he was shearing probably a couple hundred a day then. And he was very quick. Well, the young farmers clubs and everything soon adapted to get in there, you know, the young farmers to start doing this Bowen way, as they called it then. And it was good. It was good, you know. I mean, you could shear the sheep a lot faster. But I've always done it the old-fashioned way, as I call it, because it cleans the sheep better. I mean, you've seen that photograph just now. The sheep were clean. There were no streaks on it, no lines. And it's clean, and i always done that, and always clean their legs out, never left any lippets on them. And that's why I got people to, you know, have me for shear the sheep. and never used to cut them. So, you know. So, have you kept sheep then at, at like, different times in the career that you've had? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've kept sheep, yeah. 
we've had quite a few sheep. We haven't got so many now. Only Christine, my wife, she's got to look after them now because I can't go out and do anything, you know. But, uh, yeah, she'd done all the lambing last year. And uh, she pulled off the lambs. There was one difficult to come off. She'd pull them off, you know. Yeah, done very well. I mean, to start with, when I had this motor near on first, I could drive the vehicle, me discovery, down in the field. And I used to get out and crawl along the ground to the sheep, out pull the sheep off, and then crawl back to the discovery, climb up over and pull myself in and drive back. But, uh, of course, all that's gone now. I can't drive now. And, and it's just uh, not so good. So how, how, how has that been as an adjustment when with the, the illness and not being able to...? Well, it's just I can't do it. I mean, there's no getting away from it. I just can't do the things now. And Christine's got to do everything. And then if we want anything extra done, like fencing, and we've got to get somebody in to do it. Like now our neighbours have offered to do our haymaking, which is nice. The two sons from the next farm... The father came in what was it, the day before yesterday, I think it was, and he said, if you like, John and Edward will do your haymaking for us. So I rang John and I said, I hear that you would do the haymaking for us. Yeah, no problem, he said. He said, we've got some more to cut. He said, when we cut ours, we'll cut yours. He said, we'll do it all together, which I thought was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has it been adjusting to things like fencing that you can no longer do yourself but you used to be able well i should get somebody to do it like we've got a nephew he helps um there's a chap here that cuts the logs now and if we want anything done he does it and uh, or you know when he's here but uh well we just just got to get people to help us you know we got to pay people to do it which is uh which i've never had to do always done it myself yeah and has that been quite an adjustment then Oh, very, very much so, you know. I mean, I'm not one to worry about things and I don't let it get to me. But, I mean, it would drive some people mad, you know, to not be able to do what I've done all my life and suddenly I can't do none of it. I realise I've got a bad illness, this motor neuron, and there's no way that I can do anything. So, you know, I just got to accept it and and hopefully it, I last a lot longer. <laughs> uh, you say you've kept sheep then for a long time. Do you get quite fond of the sheep? Oh, yeah, you've got your favourites. I mean, Christine will tell you, they come up to Christine, she just puts her hand in her pocket with a little bit of cake like that, and they come up and eat out of her hand, you know, and all, all that sort of thing. And, of course, she rears lambs on the bottle in the winter, and she's got one now called Stacy. And this lamb, she only want to go out there, and, and the lamb will come. Yeah, so it's good. I mean, they'd come in here if you wanted it. Yeah, she'd bring it in here and let you film it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, have you kept any other animals apart from sheep? Yeah, pigs. Yeah, we used to keep pigs at one time, and we kept cattle at one time. And uh, we used to have quite a few cattle. About, I think the most we had here was about 60-something, I think it was, altogether. But, uh, of course, then VS BSE came in. And, of course, there was you just couldn't get rid of anything. And so we had to we had to sell it because we weren't making no money on the on the on the cattle, and then we sort of kept with the sheep then, which was better. We were doing all right with the sheep, and the pigs we had to get rid of because of the um, foot and mouth, because you know nobody could get rid of any small pigs in the markets and that, and it was such a difficult to get rid of them with all the. <coughs> <coughs> With all the um, restrictions, when I when the foot and mouth was about, I had to have a license to go round shearing the sheep. So I had to show people my license, and I had to keep a book and record everything where I went to. And I also took a spray with me to spray my vehicle before I went into the farm, and then spray it before I came out and spray my boots and you know and spray my equipment. Been quite a worrying time for everybody. Well, it was. I mean, yes, it was a worrying time for everybody, but we just got on with it, you know, just got on with the work and 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 just carried on, you know. We had to. You just couldn't do anything else. I mean, it was a worry, but, yeah, you couldn't do nothing else. Just keep going and hope that we didn't get foot and mouth. Uh. Okay. So this is, um, you say you're, you're, like, you're 
dad was a uh, a farmer as well. Yeah, my dad was a farmer. It was his dad a farmer? Is it like a and his dad was a farmer. Is, was there any point that you thought, maybe I won't be a farmer, or was it always? Been? Not really, no. Always, always never knew anything different. You know, when I, when we were at school, I mean, the school teachers, they'd, they'd say to us, well, it's no good asking you what career you want to do because you're going to go home on the farm, aren't you? And you say, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, we, we, all, we all came back on the farm. I mean, my oldest brother, he went lorry driving when he was about 18 because he got fed up with the farm. But the rest of us stayed on the farm because I had four brothers and two sisters. So uh, my uh, sister older than me, and one sister younger, but the sister older than me, she she uh, went with the farming. And my sister younger than me, she went to Canada. She lived in Canada for 30 some odd years. So, you know, she's home now actually at the moment. We were meeting her on Wednesday. So yeah, that's quite nice. So. Why do you think people stay with the farming in, in like the generations as it's passed? Well, because they like doing it. You know, they it's in their blood. You know, they they love love the work. You know, if you're, uh, I don't know, you put it. Um, we've always done it, and you enjoy what you're doing. I'm mean, I have. I mean, I don't know. What, I can't say for everybody, but I've always enjoyed. If you ask Christine, she never ever heard me moan about going to work, ever always enjoyed what I've done and this is what's what it's all about if you don't enjoy it you just will get out of it leave it alone you know and there's lots of people who said to me oh I don't enjoy what I'm doing I said well why do you leave it then you go do something else you know and uh, that's the only thing to do that was my advice anyway <laughs> do you think that's the kind of personality you have to have as, as a sheep show or do you think there's other traits that well, you have to have um, yes, I've always been happy with people, and I've never been miserable. I've, and another thing, I've always treated the sheep right. I'm always been gentle with the sheep, and when I turn them over, I'd never turn them over rough. Always sat them round carefully between my legs to share them. And, uh, and of course, I always had my sheep dog with me, and she came everywhere with me, so it's good. It's yeah. quite interesting you say about treating the sheep right. Do you think uh, that's not a case in many of the sheep shearers? Or? Uh, there is some that don't treat their sheep very good. Um, I sh really shouldn't say it, but there is some that are really hard on the sheep. And uh, it's wrong, really. You know, I've always treated the sheep like, well, they're sheep, aren't they? I mean, just because they're a sheep, don't mean to say you've got to be rough with them. And it's like with the animals, like with the cows. I milked cows for years, but I never rough with the cows. Always treat the cows. I'll tell you one little instance. I used to bring the cows up through the road, through Posham, and I had one cow used to walk along beside me, and I'd put my arm around her neck, and she'd walk up to the farm with me. And if my dog come anywhere near, she'd chase him off. So <laughs> she obviously liked me. <laughs> Do you find that with a lot of the animals that you kind of get fond of them and have like a mutual respect? Um, farming is way of life and it's something you can't get attached to anything. You, yes, you do a certain time, but you've got to let it go. I mean, if I was like that, I'd be bawling my eyes out half the time, wishing they wouldn't have to go to market or to slaughter, you know. But, um, no, you, you've got to, you've got to be a bit hard, you know, because, uh, if you didn't, well, you wouldn't, you would never get rid of anything. You've got to be, uh, you've got to be sensible too. It, it's it's being sensible as well you know you know it's got to go for slaughter or whatever so you know there you go yeah and how does that feel when they do go off is it quite um well you get used to it because you we've always we were brought up with it we were when we were children i mean my father used to send cattle to market and to slaughter and so we we sent it to slaughter but it's just something you get used to I mean, there's a lot of people who say, oh, fancy sending that poor little animal to slaughter, you know, just, uh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> do you, um, do you remember the first time that you, as a child, that that happened, or that you, did you ever get attached to it? No, animal? no, because the simple reason we were brought up with it, it was part of our life, you know, I mean, we'd see things when, 
I used to go out with my dad when I was five years old, lamb in the ewes. And in 1947, when we had that really bad winter, I can remember him taking a spade with him and the lambs would be born and die and he had to bury them in the snow because, you know, what else could you do? And he lost a lot of lambs that year. And I think if you were going to get sentimental and upset about it, that's when it would have kicked in. But it was something you were brought up with. It's just a way of life. And this is where probably some people go wrong, where they're coming into the country and they think they'll go farming. And then, of course, things like this happen and it upsets them. And then they can't hack it. So they, they can't deal with it, you know. It's, it's uh, very, very sad for them. It must be quite difficult, not only from a sentimental point of view, for things like that, but also because it's a business when uh, you have... A well, yeah, that's right. You've got to make a living out of it as well. I mean, you just can't go along and sort of uh, not... not um, uh, what should I say? Keep, you can't keep everything. You've got to, you've got to let it go. You've got to get rid of like you've got so many lambs. You think, oh, that's a nice lot of lambs. We'll send them to market, or somebody, somebody might want a couple of lambs for their deep freeze. So you take it off the slaughterhouse, get them done, and send them the lambs. But once it's done, I mean, it's done, and that's it. You don't, you, you can't get sentimental about it. Not with farming. I think if you did, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be no animals in the countryside. That is such, you know. Or people wouldn't get rid of them. Uh, have you had any like difficult times, like you say, that winter? Have you ever had any difficult times when things have got quite slow, or things have you've had a bad winter? Or well, yeah, that that like when my father was doing it in 1947, that was a bad winter. We we started our married life in 1962-63 winter. We got married in October. And of course, then we had that really bad winter, 62, 63. And that's when we started farming, Kristen and me. And we were milking a smaller herd of cows down at Stagurzy. And we just got on with it. You know, just we had to milk the cows. So long as we milked the cows morning and night, I said, all, all we could do, you couldn't do anything else because it was so cold and everything was frosted up. Every morning I went out, used to have to unfreeze the milking machine and all that sort of thing, you know, and that was it. Quite difficult early stages of marriage, though. Is that, was that a strange? Well, yeah, because there was no money about, was there? We we didn't have any money. I mean, it was very short, and and you know, it was it was a worrying time. When I say I didn't worry, I don't worry about it. It's probably that was the most worrying time I had when we got married first, when there wasn't the money about, you know. And but I used to do sheep shearing then as well, when because I used to milk my cows, go off sheep shearing, and come back in the afternoon and milk them again, you know, things like that. Yeah, so, uh, yes, it, yeah, it was a little bit worrying, that. But then, of course, as time went on, you have sort of got used to all that sort of thing and trying not to let it worry you. Was there any point where you thought, like, especially that time where you thought maybe I should be doing something else or maybe it was a different... Not really, not really. No, because it, it was what I've done, you know, way of life, and that was it, you know. So, uh, yeah.